Hello, and welcome back. They say y'all may not be a tornado, but you stay blowing us away. And to that, we say, hell yeah. Today, we have a wonderful movie, another entrant into the Tubi cinematic hierarchy. The name of this title, Safe Word. Huh? And uh, I believe this pick was Leslie's pick, so we're going to turn it right over to her. Please tell us about Safe Word. All right, gladly. So this was my pick. It came out this year, year of 2023. The director is Sarah Seligman. I believe is how you pronounce your last name. Sorry, I, was, I was trying to work on that, too. It, that feels right. That yeah, feels right. It's the best I could do. Um, yeah. And it was starring Mariah Brown, which... Um, she played two things that I know that I've seen. She played uh, one of the mom's friends in Raising Dion, the first season when her mom, his mom got back into dance. And then she also played, um, oh. what's her character named Kiki on Power Book 2? She played uh, Brayden's little friend at the work, at the um, at his uncle's business in Power Book 2. I knew she looked so you familiar. Her character? I don't know. Where is she from? That's her. Yeah, mm, that's her. Mm, mm, okay. And then um the the leading gentleman in this movie, his name is Gavin Houston, and he played on the Have and Have Nots. I could not stand him on the Have and Have is Nots. He, is he a um is he a is he some type of like Chris Stokes connection, Jarrell Houston Houston? Not that I know of. Them? You know the Have and Have Nots was Tyler Perry, but not that I know. I don't know if he knows them or is cool with them. I didn't I don't remember seeing their name on this movie, but um, I right, couldn't but it. you know, his last name is Houston. So in my mind, if you're black, and your mm. last name is Houston. Now I'm just, I have, I have uh -oh. thoughts. No, I don't think they're related. But um, yeah, I like I said, he was annoying to have have nots. But since then, I've seen him in other stuff, and he's you know done really well, and he's gotten cuter too. So that's a plus. All right, so starting off with Act One. <laughs> This started off great. It, I was intrigued from the get-go. You know me. I need something to grab my attention. So <laughs> we start with a guy with an um, accent of some sorts. I guess it was English. I don't know. It was in uh, English. You have never seen Notting Hill. That was really hilarious. I, I have I know neither one of y'all had I seen that movie. Not. And I was like, wow. And it was funny. It, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Just, just go ahead. I need go to ahead finish your thought because this is good. Go ahead. Finish no, your I thought. just knew it was Notting Hill. I was like, is he Hugh Grant? The fuck is he doing? And I was like, oh, they're trying to be Notting Hill. That's, that's cute. Yeah, that's cute. Yeah, so yeah. like Tristan said, it starts off with this guy with his English accent accidentally bumping into a woman and spilling his um, juice all over her white t-shirt. So, of course, he offers for her to come back to his place because it's nearby and she can clean up. So we see her in the bathroom. She takes off her shirt, just has a bra on. She wraps a towel around and then she comes out of the bathroom, kind of leans against the wall and he rips the towel away and they start making passionate love. And then we realize, oh, they're not strangers. They're in a relationship. They're just role playing. That's their thing. Got it. So we go to, um, oh, and he actually surprises her with like a new outfit to go back to work in since, you know, her shirt was ruined. And we learned that this was just a little rendezvous they had over lunch. Um, afternoon delight, if you will. There you go. That's where the song afternoon comes in. Delight. Yes, <laughs> afternoon delight. You know, a lot of people thought that was about like dessert or something like that, but yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he said, I'm going to kiss my baby and hold her tight. I feel like that's enough. You should know. No, people don't always listen to words. They just, you know, feel the song. So um, we learned that the main actress name is Colette and she's actually spilling the tea about her rendezvous during lunch with um, her boyfriend, Ethan. She's talking about this with her best friend, Lainey, who is also her coworker. They're uh, realtors. So uh she ends up telling um lady tells colette that maybe she should kind of like pump the brakes with ethan because um you know everything is moving fast but then colette's like no it just feels right we're fast good was incorrect it was moving warp speed like they were <laughs> they were moving yeah because how many months had it been it was like a few like months eight. I think a month. I only think it had been. I, I was like sure. Yeah, it was. It was very fast. They did meet on a dating app, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, things definitely moved at warp speed for them. Um, so then we see that Ethan surprises Colette with a whole glam team, a car service that brings uh, her to his parents' estate, and he proposes. They elope in Vegas, and he buys her a new home, and. That's when we get into act two of it all, where things really start to go down. So we find out that um, Ethan is a lawyer with ownership stake in his boss's law firm. And later on in the movie, we find out. Yeah, one time. I'm sorry. 
never went to work. It, it wasn't was, about him. It wasn't when about he was, him. It wasn't about him. When he was him. at work, he was sitting in the office getting scolded. That was it. Like we never saw him actually doing this. Not one case. But go ahead. Right. Right. But, he, he, he could just work. He, he could just be corporate. He could just be corporate. You don't know exactly what they need him to do at the firm. You don't know. <laughs> so um, later on in the movie, we find out his boss's name is Ann. So I'll just refer to her as Ann moving forward. Um, but so Ann is upset that he got married without a prenup or informing her. And so then we see that Colette, Ethan, Lainey, and Colette's mother are at their new home. They're catching up about, you know, their wedding, everything going on. And Colette, you know, says that this new home is beautiful. She loves it, even though it is an hour away from her job, but she'll make it work because it's worth it. And that's when Lainey starts like, you know, getting excited about the bachelorette plans that she has for Colette because they eloped in Vegas. She didn't get to have a bachelorette party beforehand. So what are your thoughts? I just feel like you missed out on that. You missed that boat. It's <laughs> you can't have you, one afterwards. You married. You missed that boat. It's a party at this point, and I can come along. <laughs> like you missed. You missed out on that one. It could, it could be a co-ed bachelor bachelor right. type of thing. That'd be fun. So we just um, taking another vacation. That's what I heard. That's that's all I heard. I mean, hey, or just having it at the house, having friends yeah. over. Yeah. So uh, hearing about the bachelorette plans actually upsets Ethan to where he, you know, leaves the kitchen. And he goes in the other room and he actually yells at Colette. Um, even when she says she's not going, he is just visibly irritated and upset. So Ethan tells her that he senses Lainey doesn't like him um, or feels a way towards him. But Colette just reassures him, just don't take it personally. She has nothing against you. So Ethan suggests kicking off their honeymoon by going to a sex club, you know, trying something different. Um, he said he's been to it before and Wonderful. just ask if, Colette trusts him and Beautiful. trusts that he knows what she likes. So she says yes, and they go to the sex club. So as soon as they're walking in, we see the camera pants of this woman who clearly recognizes one of them. We don't know at this moment who which one. Um, and she's watching them as they uh, make out across the room. And that's when Ethan gives Colette like some sex toys. They come up with their code word, which is or their safe word. Hence the name of the movie, which is Red. <laughs> and they actually begin having sex and experimenting with their toys in one of the back rooms. So Ethan says he wants to punish Colette for working when they agreed on an additional week for their honeymoon. She's been uh, a bad girl. Can't, uh, do something. Can't do something. Apparently, that always like gives me red flags. I want to punish you, but I digress. Not my thing. Why are you being bad, girl? You wouldn't get punished oh. otherwise. And that whole girl thing, like, not my thing. So, anyway. <laughs> Gosh. But you got to be a good girl and you won't get punished. <laughs> okay. I'm ill. <laughs> I don't. It's like freaking me out. <laughs> oh. Okay. Oh, so. Colette is worried um, that one of her colleagues, Brenda, will actually take all her clients if she's gone for much longer. And that because she's been gone for a minute. She's, you know, so engulfed in being lady was a bulldog. She was like, I'm going to take these clients. But I mean, to be fair, Colette was out two, three weeks at a time. Oh, so no, what sure. you expect? Yeah. Like, yeah. clients still need to be helped. So um, Ethan actually says so introduce Colette to some of his clients from the law firm just to bring her more business so she doesn't have to worry about Brenda taking hers. So Lainey actually calls Colette and tells her, hey, girl, I know you've been enjoying your honeymoon and being a newlywed, but you need to get your butt back in this office ASAP, like tomorrow. And so she returns and her and Brenda exchange some little smart words. Um, and that's when Colette sits Lainey down. To me, they were having these discussions just out in the open. Like they didn't have an office to go into and close yeah. the door. Yeah, so they was just in the common area <laughs> divulging like secret information, you know, personal information. So Colette tells Lainey about the sex club and they start, you know, being girly and giddy and discussing details. Um, but basically at the end of that conversation, Lainey warns Colette not to basically lose herself, you know, in Ethan and get caught up in all the wonderful sex that they're having. She said, don't get a dick, Tid. Don't. Thank, thank you for that. You thought that was clever. <laughs> I even knew it was going to hit. He didn't didn't have, well, I mean, it, she she felt it for sure. Oh well, many times, many Great. times over. Here we are. Yeah. Oh yeah. So 
Uh, we see Ethan gets frustrated with Colette again when she tells him she has to take her mom the medicine that she left at their house. And he doesn't want her to leave, so he ends up convincing her to stay and help him prepare for a dinner party, which that is a red flag, girl. If he don't want you to take your mama her meds, like, what? Well, wait, now, wait a minute. Where Now, that one I almost I wasn't upset about only because of the fact that when he said, doesn't she have helpers already that get her that stuff? She was like, so you just want to deliver it to her personally. So that wasn't necessarily necessary. And you did promise me that you were going to help me with the dinner party. Like, mm. I would probably be a little upset if that happened. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm probably going to let you go. But, like, I would probably be a little irritated. Like, we were supposed to help me cook and stuff. What's up? I thought we were cooking. Well, I thought we were a team. What's up? Medicine. It wouldn't even took that long. That was kind of crazy. Like, and her mom I, 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 I don't know how. Her, they might have got to talk and be there for two hours. You know, it, it might be. You never know. If I need to take my mom or something. <laughs> but if, but if there was already somebody there to take it, and you're paying somebody to do that, why are they not doing it? I guess that's what was well, my he was question. saying. The helpers were where his mom was, not at their house. Oh, okay. I, it just seemed as if they had somebody that that served mm-hmm. that purpose. Not that at was... not at their house. No, that's why she would have had to take it. So, um, Lainey actually uh, mentions the sex club when her and Ethan are having like a moment off to the side, um, and. She basically asks, like, how'd you get Colette to do it? That's, like, not in her nature. And he basically replies all slightly, like, maybe you don't know her as well as you thought you did. Oh. Mm. Really annoying yeah. of her friend to bring that up. That was so weird. That's, I was like, why Ooh. would you bring that up to her man? Like, that that's weird, girl. Like, I, mean, I think that was her trying to, that was her, that was her olive people. branch. That was her mm. olive branch to him. Like, like. Mm. Well, because like it was it was ill advised, but it was her olive branch to him because she was so bewildered. She was like, I can't even believe that she would do that. And you would think that somebody who would go to a sex club would be pretty open about it. But I you feel know like girls saying? girls have that code to where it's like, well, we discuss about your life. I'm not gonna bring up to your partner. Right. Which is you wild. Know, like, which I thought was still wild, but you know, whatever. Because that's the same thing with partners bringing it back up to the friend, like, oh, my girl was pillow talking and she told me what well, your man did. You like a partner isn't gonna do that, isn't gonna go to your friend and tell them what she yeah. told him, but I digress. So um, Daniel, who's Ethan's co-worker, he's at the dinner as well as the four of them. He asked um, Colette how long her and Lainey have been realtors. And they actually started discussing like their plan to start their own firm soon. Once again, Ethan is visibly irritated. <laughs> this man got irritated at every little thing, which was irritating to me. Um, so basically he's irritated because it's the first time he's heard of Colette wanting to start her own business. And Daniel and Lainey are still talking, you know, having a sidebar conversation. And that's when Daniel actually invites Lainey to a bar after dinner so he can introduce her to the client who wants to open a speakeasy because Lainey deals with commercial real estate. So Ethan basically lets Colette know that he feels like a third wheel within his own marriage with Lainey. And he doesn't appreciate Colette telling Lainey all of their business. So she apologizes and says it won't happen again. So now we see that they're back at the sex club and they end up having a threesome with a woman in one of the rooms, the private rooms. And we see that the same woman who saw them the first time they entered is there working the club as a waitress. And she actually approaches Colette and Ethan. Um, she, well, Ethan walks off first. So she approaches Colette as they're coming out of the back room and basically asks if she's Ethan's girlfriend. And Colette looks like confused, like what? Like, no, I'm his wife. And at that moment, Ethan walks back over and he just, he's staring her down, like just this evil eye. And that's when the girl walks away. And we later learn her name is Fiona. So I'll start addressing her as Fiona. Do you think they called her Fiona because she was tall, like Shrek's wife? Oh gosh, no. Because she was actually beautiful. She, she, right, so Fiona well, was beautiful well, too. Fiona was beautiful too. Right, that's what I'm saying. So I just assumed. <laughs> No. Oh, so, she was my favorite though. That was my she was my favorite character in the whole movie. She was badass. Well, I actually thought really I love her. Her. she was my favorite too when she got into it. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. So um Ethan tells Colette that Fiona is his ex-girlfriend and their breakup actually ended physically and he had to get a restraining order against her. And he's basically pissed that their restraining order didn't like reinstate or extend. And um Basically, their boss tells Daniel to take care of Fiona. So now we're really starting to see like this and boss lady is kind of running everything, pulling everyone's string like they all listen to what she says to do. 
So Ethan asks if Colette enjoyed the threesome and she says that she likes being pushed outside of her comfort zone. And that's when Ethan suggests that they get rid of their safe word since she trusts him. Colette tells Lainey about their last experience in a sex club and then Lainey is very suspicious. Um, she doesn't like buy this whole restraining order against Fiona thing. Her spidey senses tingle. So next we go to her Lainey um, senses, if you will. Her Lainey senses. You're right. That was better. So now we're back outside the club. And we see Daniel is approaching Fiona and he questions like, what are you doing here? Then we, you know, put a restraining order against you, get rid of you. Like, why are you here? And she's basically saying like, yo, I found Ethan. I'm not scared of him. Um, and that's when Daniel tries to like grab Fiona. She ends up kneeing him. She runs to her car, grabs what was it a was it a bat or crowbar? A tire, a tire iron. Tire a tire iron. iron. Tire iron. Mm. Okay, mm. so she grabs that and just starts beating him unconscious, like beating the mess out of that boy. So we then see that Ethan's hey, boss man like has Cameron's in Yeah, yeah, yeah. Broad day, sunny outside, beautiful day. Need a beautiful day. Uh but nobody's no, at the club because no, it's during the day. Nobody's expecting it. Nobody's yeah. expecting it. That's it was the during the day. It. Yeah. So we then see Ethan's boss Anne is looking at uh, cameras that are actually placed inside and outside of their home, of Colette and Ethan's home. And we go to where Lainey is starting to do some digging on the computer, trying to find out more about this restraining order that Ethan has against Fiona. And Colette actually walks up in the middle of her looking. So they start arguing because Lainey says Ethan's lying about the restraining order. I didn't see anything in here about that. And Basically, Colette tells her, you know, to butt out, back off. This is my man. I believe him. That's that. Which, I mean, that's that's how that usually goes. So, Colette is um, in their yard doing her mom's nails. They're discussing Lainey when Ethan walks up, again, looking visibly irritated. And he basically just didn't know her mom was coming over. And he said he doesn't like surprises. He just kind of, like, glares at her mom. Her mom just looks like, all right, this nigga. So Ethan and his boss, Dan, are um, actually conversing and they're trying to figure out where Daniel is because Ann sent him out to take care of Fiona and they haven't seen him since. And she's basically saying she's not sure how much longer she can continue to clean up after Ethan and his mess because apparently he's just sloppy with what he does. So we see that Colette and Ethan go back to the club. They're actually in a private room. And that's when Ethan introduces her to Shibari. Hey, y'all. It's your girl, Shonda Don. And I'm here to tell y'all that we now have merch up live. You can find some t-shirts. You can find puzzles. You can find candles. Whatever you want, we got it. Come check us out at culture101podcast.com. Um, and it's like a ancient, was a Japanese practice? With yeah. Ropes? Yeah. Like a soft rope that you, you know, like some type of bondage practice. Yeah. So, um, at first Colette says she can't, you know, partake because she has some trauma that she experienced previously in her life that would be a trigger for her. Um, but he basically coerces her into allowing him to tie her arms and legs up. And she just immediately just like gets hysterical because she's uncomfortable and, She's using the safe word red. He's not listening because, again, remember, he said, we're going to get rid of that safe word. That means nothing because you trust me. The first um, red flag. Yeah. No, there was there was more red flags before that, but that's definitely a red flag for sure. Um, so she's hysterical at this point. She ends up having a panic, panic attack. And the next scene is when they're at home arguing about it. And he's just very, like, dismissive of her feelings and her overall, like, experience. And basically manipulates it and flips it back on her and blames her for having him walk on eggshells around her which i'm like girl you don't see what he's doing but mm -hmm. textbook outside they're looking in mm -hmm. execution flawless i was like it's flawless execution yeah it's crazy so the next day colette is like having a meltdown at work like she's supposed to be paying attention to whatever her boss is talking about in their um in their meeting but she's like looking at her phone because she's been texting Ethan and he hasn't responded and she ends up having to run out of the meeting to the restroom because she starts having another panic attack. 
And that's when Lainey comes to comfort her. She's helping her count to, you know, calm down. And basically Lainey is telling her like, girl, you did not do anything wrong. Like you were not comfortable. And you told him that beforehand, but Colette is convinced that basically from what Ethan said, that it's her fault. And so we see that her and Ethan finally get together to discuss what happened the previous night. And he says to like help improve and work on their marriage, they should go to his family's estate and um, whatever visit she had planned with her mom, which she had one that he, she should just reschedule. She's like, okay, fine. I'll reschedule. So we see before they head to the estate, um, they're in the kitchen. Ethan's in the kitchen first. Lainey is calling Colette's phone. He declines the call. And then, um, we see that when Lainey goes to the boss to see if he's talked to Colette, the boss is like, I would have thought you would have heard from her. That's your friend. But he basically says that her husband, Ethan, submitted a doctor's note saying that, you know, um, Colette suffers from manic depressive episodes and needs to take like a leave of absence to deal with those. Mm. I'm like, this guy is good. So next we go to, um, act three where they're at the estate. And Ethan is like sitting outside by the pool. Colette joins him and he basically says he's not sure if their marriage marriage will work because Colette doesn't prioritize him. So she's like, oh, you know, I'll stop telling Lainey everything and, you know, we can work on this. I believe in this type of stuff. And she thinks it's time for them to like go back home because they've been at the estate apparently for two weeks at this point. Neither one of them been to work. Neither one of them have talked to any friends or family. It's just been them two. So once again, Ethan guilt trips her about staying until their marriage is in a better place. So they continue to argue when she gets up to leave and he yells for her to stop. And he actually comes after her and gets physical by grabbing her and telling her that she's his wife and she'll listen to him. So then we see that he ties her up to the bedroom upstairs, um, in the bedroom upstairs, I should say, to the bed. And we see the next morning he's like bringing her breakfast in bed. And so she's basically trying to like soothe things over so he can untie her. So she's saying, um, first he says that she needs to emphasize the love, honor, and obey in their wedding vows. And he basically comes out kind of like divulging his plan. Like he shows that he has documents stating that he's her caregiver due to her manic depression, which is a conservatorship. Um, and he lists off all the trauma from her past that she, you know, of course, in, in the beginning of the relationship, I'm assuming talk to him about so now he's using all of that previous trauma against her so meanwhile we see that Lainey ends up going to the sex club trying to find Fiona she wants to ask her some questions and talk to her right so Fiona basically tells her that Ethan likes insubs which means he gets pleasure from those who do not consent that's that's his thing so um, Lainey says she thinks that they're at his estate, but she doesn't know how to get there. And Fiona's like, oh, I may know how. And she opens her trunk and then we see she has Daniel tied how up in How long have he been there? How long he been in that trunk? Every day how long at this point. Did she feed him? Did he get water to get to the bathroom? Probably not. He probably soiled himself. His Child. clothes look too fresh. No, I don't, I don't know about all that. That was wild. That was too wild. <laughs> I was like, how long have you been in that trunk, girl? It's hot right. there. Would you, he didn't die. He didn't stroke or something. Good Lord. Yeah, maybe she cut the air on. I don't know. So, <laughs> so we can we can assume that Daniel told them how to get to this state. Um, and we see it cuts to Ethan's boss, Anne, who's once again watching her surveillance camera on the estate because she got cameras everywhere. And she sends her assistant to gain control of Ethan since she can see this man has clearly lost it. Like he's tripping, tripping. So Ethan brings Colette some pudding that he made from scratch and she begs for him to untie her so they can make it work. Ethan says he can't trust her and yells for her to stop talking before he slaps her. Uh, Oh, well, he says stop talking. Then he ends up slapping her or whatever. So right around that time is when Fiona pulls up. Uh, Lainey gets out the car. She crawls over or like looks to see if the, his car is there she sees that it's there and Fiona's like okay what you gonna do so Lainey you know thinking logical is like I'm gonna call the police type of thing talks to the police they're very you know nonchalant and they're basically saying we may sim- send someone out there but there's no guarantee so at that point Lainey is like you know what we got to just do this on our own I'm with you Fiona like let's go so she crawls over the gate and knocks on the door 
Ethan opens the door and basically says he doesn't know where Colette is. But of course, Lainey ain't buying that. So she tries to like push the door open and go past him. And that's when he tries to like close it. And he ends up coming out and like choking her. So as he's choking her, um, Fiona comes with that same tire iron and beats him with it. She, she was good for that. Like she, she didn't hold back when it came she to that. practice with it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So we see that Lainey at this point, since uh, Fiona's beat him, uh, Lainey runs into the house and calls out for Colette. Colette responds and she runs up the stairs and finds her tied up on the bed. And she ends up freeing her and then they both go downstairs. And Lainey's like, yo, let's get out of here. But Colette's like, wait, like he admitted that he has this conservatorship over me. I need him to confess so that the confess that is fake. So I won't be held to it. So they basically drag Ethan inside and as he begins to wake up, Fiona starts to beat him again because <laughs> Fiona got to get some aggression out, rightfully so. So uh, Colette says uh, she has a plant and she ends up going to get her mom's meds. So she gets like this needle and this liquid medication, um, which will paralyze him. So Fiona uses his own handcuffs to secure him to the stairs. And Fiona asks Colette what her mental health issues are since she knows that's who Ethan pries on. So um, they discuss, you know, briefly their mental health issues. And then Fiona ends up telling Colette that his college sweetheart actually died of erotic asphyxiation, but Ethan was only charged with manslaughter. And so that's when like her eyes are really open. Like, yo, this dude is sick and uh, got his record expunged. So uh, he could go to law school. Um, So she also, then Colette's starting to put the pieces together and she realizes Anne also got the conservatorship for Ethan. So again, Ethan starts waking up and they demand that he confess about the conservatorship and everything. And he's like, still being Ethan. I did nothing wrong. Baby, I love you. You know, uncuff me, help me. And Colette just looks down at him like, no. <laughs> and so they start brainstorming how they can get him to confess. Um, and they start looking for his phone. So the girls go look upstairs while Fiona is left downstairs with Ethan. And she basically tells him, I'm here for revenge. I don't care about no confession. Like, <laughs> what's up? He says, come and get it. And that's when the other two women come down at that same moment. And Fiona gives them the phone that was on him. They use his face to unlock it. And they find like this group chat called the Sublimation, which is run by mm-hmm. Anne. And Lainey's the one looking through the phone and she's like disgusted by whatever is in that group chat. And she said, she puts the phone away. She's like, no, you don't need to see this. This is sick. So. <laughs> that was dramatic. Yeah. Cause how did you read that much right. that quick? Like, right. Yeah. I'm not, unless it's just pictures. Like what, what picture could you get? Th- look. Maybe look, like victims it. tied up and. Okay. Like, That's so stuff. shocking. It's so shocking. Stop I mean, it, like, Lainey, Lainey, Lainey was scary. Laney was scary. Keep going. I'm sorry. Keep okay. going. We have to Almost there. So Laney is disgusted. She puts the phone away. And Fe- that's when Fiona stabs Ethan in the stomach. Because, again, she came for revenge, not no confession, and not to save his life. So that's when um, Colette has to come from behind um, uh, Fiona to inject her with the medicine that's going to paralyze her. Because if she don't, then Fiona's going to kill this man. And they're trying to get him arrested. So right mm-hmm. at that moment, the police uh, arrive, and that's when the girls explain everything to them. Um, the, there's a female cop walking Fiona out in handcuffs while there's a male cop walking Ethan out in handcuffs. And as she's walking Fiona out, she she realizes, like, she's like, no, this is Stephanie. This is Anne's assistant. It's Stephanie. But, of course, like, Colette and Lainey don't know like who Stephanie is or about Anne, like for sure, for sure. So they're like, is this the meds talking? Like what is she talking about? They kind of just like look at her and look at them each other. Um, but they don't really heed her warning that she's trying to get to them. And then they put both of them, both Ethan and Fiona in the same, in the back of the same cop car, which I was like, wouldn't they put them in separate ones? I feel like they put, wouldn't they put them in separate ones? And that yeah. protocol? Mm, I mean, if they're both it cops, just, it just that. depends. I would put you in the same. I would sue y'all. Don't put me in the same car as somebody that just stabbed me. <laughs> that is a good point. That is a good point. Because I forget why, because I was trying to figure out why they arrested her. But then in that case, why wasn't Colette arrested too? You know what yeah. I mean? Well, she didn't stab That's her. She did. Sense. She stabbed her. She did. She stabbed both of them with a needle. That's assault. That's assault any day of the week. That's uh, easy. The That's easy as hell. But if you're like defending yourself to get away, you weren't right? defending yourself. You weren't. He was. He was passed out when you stabbed him. So, True. Hmm. and they all should have been arrested. To like, and, and homegirl, and talk it out. Like, don't ask for questions. Yeah. 
Right, right, right. right. You know what I'm saying? And then you stabbed her with a needle. She wasn't attacking you. Yeah. That's an interesting point. You're right. You're right. So um, Stephanie asks uh, the girls for Ethan's phone and tells them that they can go to the station to file a police support. So as the cops are pulling off, Colette and Lainey actually have this realization that the officer didn't ask them for the contact information or ask them any like follow up questions. And they both say like the police car actually looked very weird. And they're just like, huh. So now we see that Stephanie is back in her regular clothes and she's actually planting a gun in Fiona's hand um, as she and Daniel are in the back of Fiona's car with a bullet in each of their heads. So, you know, she ends up killing Fiona. I, I was sad about that because Fiona was a rider. She, she was doing it. Yeah, she was a rider. She was. Um, and then the last scene is Anne dismissing Stephanie from the room as Ethan is tied up on his stomach. And she basically tells Ethan, you're a disappointment. You're not a dom. You're a sub, like just going in on him. And she basically says she had one rule for him and that was consent. And he broke that rule. So she ends up pulling the mask over his face and hoisting him up into the air. And the movie ends with him screaming red. Which Thoughts. is crazy. He used the same think. safe word with Ann and his wife. He... That's that was crazy to me. I wasn't expecting See, him to be red, red is a cop. Red's a common safe word, though. I mean, yellow is when you're edging, know. and then red is probably one of the more common safe words. Yeah, and plus what? they took that from Fifty Shades of Grey. That's in Fifty Shades of Grey. Oh, I've never seen about all this, Tristan. You, you, I, you didn't I, read the books? Y'all didn't read the books? I, it, I started it, but then I didn't finish my it. My mom <laughs> actually. My mom actually read them. She has all three books, and I got yeah. them. I just haven't read them yet, but I've watched I read all three books. of them. Oh, yeah. yeah uh-huh. she, that lady can't write for real, but, you know, it was entertaining. <laughs> it's true. I'm going to tell you. That's funny. That's funny. But, yes, go ahead, thoughts. Hey, y'all. It's your girl, Les, stopping by to let you know we have new merch dropping. Check it all out at culture101podcast.com. Um, Sean, I'll let you go first. I feel like you got uh-huh. some thoughts brimming on, 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 on the brain. It. Um, okay. it was still like parts to I'll me that it. just didn't make sense. Like the guy in the trunk, how long was he there? Because I thought two weeks had passed. That was weird. Um, <laughs> that didn't make right. sense. It was bad. <laughs> Um, what else happened? Like, like, and, and nobody, and nobody did this. When you open the trunk, it should have been like this. Should have stank. Like, yeah. 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 I she wasn't taking care of him, so yeah, it should have been. And she been like in his life since he was a kid, like since he, before he went to law school, like that was weird. I didn't understand what their relationship was. I guess was. you can as- I guess the assumption was maybe he got into this like sublimation life, maybe in college or something before like law school came around type of thing. And that's when she kind of became, I'm just assuming here, I, it wasn't fleshed out from your point. Yeah. So I agree. I would give it a three. Oh, just a three. Just a three. Fair enough. Well, well, we would, well, then we would be in agreement because it's definitely a three. It's a hard three. Like a, hard three. a, a hard, hard three. A hard three. A hard three. Okay. Like, so what was it missing for you, Tristan? Okay. Well, here we go. Oh, so read it on pad out. First off, as soon as soon as soon as I saw that harp, I was suspicious. I'd have been like, <laughs> "You brought a harp player here? Oh no, I'm." It suspicious. was so hell no. Nah. You didn't brought a harp player? No, nah, I'm suspicious. That's that's that ain't. Because where it. you find them? <laughs> right, right, exactly, exactly. Got a harp they play dragged that day. shit down here too. No, nah. mm, nah. <laughs> and then y'all was crazy moving light speed. Like I understand things happen quickly. I get all of that. But girl, like he proposed to you and you just got and then you decided yeah. to get married at that moment? Yeah. What? That's okay. insane. It's insane. Y'all not even like 50. Like what are we even talking about right now? That shit's wild. You know? And then when you talk about I'm gonna get rid of the safe word, always have a safe word. Yeah. Always have a safe word. Y'all if you have sex for 70 years, you should have a safe word. There mm-hmm. should be some word. Like I don't care how many how many syllables it is, they need to be a safe word. It's important. Um, the ending definitely leaves something to be desired because like <laughs> they just like with the last 20 minutes, they always find a way to fuck it up on Tubi in the last 20 minutes. Like, like they be rushing or something. Y'all were, right, right. I get it. Deadlines, whatever it was like y'all set up this beautiful, 
Right. The sex club looked good. Like mm-hmm. I was like, okay, this really feels right. And they were borrowing from other movies. Like you saw a little nine and a half, nine and a half weeks. You know, you saw a little eyes wide shut with some mm-hmm. of the secrecy. Mm-hmm. You saw some Fifty Shades, a few things there, the red room, all of that. You know, like, don't get me wrong. Like, I, I get it. I understand what you were trying to do. You kind of make a little sexy thriller. That's cute and all, but you, you missed some shit. That's okay. all I'm saying. And then like, I just didn't, like, I understand she had a history of mental health and all of that. But I just felt like I don't know no black woman that wasn't going to cut him. He would have been cut a long time ago. I just felt like he would have been cut like in his sleep, something like she would have run to him while he was sleeping, held a knife to him. Like, I think you just forgot who I am. Mm-hmm, like, you went to mm-hmm. sleep next to her, bro. Are you crazy? Like, she, like are you insane? You're going to go to sleep next to a woman? Oh, you're insane, bro. Yeah. You could have you could have died. But whatever, you know. And then Lainey was scary. She kept pissing me off because you over here poking your nose and then you didn't even do the right. And what kind of sense does it make? You're going to go on a mission and you're wearing heel boots? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> you, you changing your sweatpants? You didn't want to put your Tims on? Right, right. Like, you didn't even put your hair in a ponytail. What are you doing? Somebody yeah. out. Right. Like, <laughs> you didn't put on no leather, nothing. You just you know about go, that life. That's you, didn't go, you didn't go bring your gun that you keep in your house in the shoebox. Nothing. She know like, about that, that was life. insane. Talk about, I'm going to call the police. When the person that was held captive tell you, I don't want you to call the police, that should tell you something now. That's wild. Yeah. That's yeah. wild. But you go call the police because you know best. Fuck out of here. No, <laughs> no. No, but I will say um, I did like his character. I don't know who's crazier, him or Doctor Yo. Probably still Doctor Yo because she stabbed two people. Right, that was wild. right. But um, he was a punk disguised as like. But the thing about being a dom is that patience. It's mm. all about it's a patience game. Because the thing is that you, because the reason you are a dom is because you are dominant over their pleasure. So you can mm. give them pleasure and take it away whenever you want to. So mm. he just really didn't understand the core fundamentals of being a dominant. And it's all about patience because you are you were too available. And then you were playing like you were playing on the emotions correctly to be like some type of abusive dominant. But you just didn't see it through. I just I mean, I get it. That's part of the whole character. I get it. Mm-hmm, That's part mm-hmm. of his, that was his Achilles heel. But uh, I don't know. But I did like Anne. Anne was running it. I like her. She cleaned, she cleaned that up. She cleaned that up, too. She, she said, girl, go handle that person. Go handle that. Mm-hmm. And, and got it handled. I was upset at, at uh, Daniel. How the hell you let her punk you? But bro, <laughs> she kicked you in the dick, and then you let her beat you You're half beat. to death. Yeah. Like, what? You came there to beat her, and you let her just... God. I, was, I was so out there. I was like, this is, this is insane. But um, yeah, they no, it's a heart. Time, a heart. They, was you can't go no higher three. they was equal playing field. What'd you say, Sean? Fiona and the guy, they was about the same size. Oh, right, right. Fiona she knows, she, was, <laughs> no, she did look like she started on somebody's basketball team for sure. Like, you absolutely. Stupid. No, but yeah. Fiona was my favorite, though. Like, if you was taking a lady in the movie, she I was too. definitely my favorite. You yeah, know? Was but was honestly, I think, I think Fiona, I just think Fiona didn't act quick enough either, too. Like, I was just like, you were, I felt like you were always coming in a step behind. You know what mm. I mean? Mm-hmm. So, but again, it's we don't have a movie if she acted too quickly. So, right. you know, who knows? But uh, yeah, that's a, that's a hard three. Yeah, hard. Okay. Hard I feel three. like I would give this a three point five. Like I enjoyed it. Um, there were some holes which y'all both pointed out, so I would give y'all that there. Um, but overall, I feel like it made sense. Um, I'm wondering if they're gonna try to stretch it to a second one just because you have to. You have he's to. still a lot, right? I feel like he's gonna have a new victim or maybe come back around to Colette. Like something's gonna ha- or maybe Colette's gonna be the Fiona for the second one, warning the new girl type of thing. So I definitely feel like they're gonna make another one. Um, but I would give it a three point five. I was entertained. So I mean, it was a hard three, so it's not gonna go down. So I would watch the second one. I would be okay. curious to see what the second one looked like. I wouldn't Fair I enough. wouldn't be like I wouldn't skip past it. So it, it definitely has that. Cinematography was fine. Some of the transitions were a little rough, but mm-hmm. um most of the time I was engaged. So yeah. It's good. Okay. Yeah. Well like, go ahead. Yeah, it was definitely a movie that should never have been in theaters. It was right where it belonged. Well yeah. It was Fair. just right where it belonged. Fair. So does it do it for the culture for y'all? I guess so. I guess so. I guess it does. Okay. I guess. I guess. Because, that because yes, black people, I know, reluctantly say yes. Right, right. Like it, it is reluctant because <laughs> black people are kinky. So I appreciate that they shine the <laughs> light on black that. kinks. Okay. Right. You know, because okay. they don't they don't they don't show enough of that. You right. know, we have we we we're not a monolith. We do a lot right. of different things, you know. We I like that the, I like that the head boss, she had locks that really appreciated that. Okay. You know, a lot of 
lot of different varieties in black hair, a lot of different varieties in black people. Okay. You know? So other ethnicities were in the movie, you know, uh, none of the dialogue really seemed forced, you know? So mm-hmm. I, I feel like it, you know, and people had, uh, I mean, run of the mill professions, lawyer, uh, but Real like estate, it wasn't about yeah. drugs or you no know, gangster shit. So, I mean, there was some gangster shit. Let me not, <laughs> let, me, let me keep it a hundred. There was definitely some gangster shit. But I, I like the way that they displayed it. So I, okay. it, it, it does it for the culture. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Don't say it, it like that. It, it like, it. Yeah. I'm the same way. Like, yeah, I guess. Well, well, I'll do it for y'all. It does it for the culture. Thanks I'm, happy, for the I'm happy you could have that, Liz. I really am. I really am. I'm happy you file it. Oh my goodness. Well, well does that, does that sign off for the rest of this Tubi movie review? Is, yep. That's all I got for you. I think that was right, enough. Right. I'm saying red. Okay. All <laughs> right, guys. Well, if you enjoyed this and would like to see some other Tubi movie reviews, please check us out on any of the platforms where you do get your podcasts, most preferably Spotify and Apple and YouTube. Please like and subscribe. But if you wanted to contact us, you would do so. How, Les? You can contact us by either sending us an email at contact at culture101podcast.com or you can hop over to the website culture101podcast.com. Scroll all the way down to the first on the first page to our listener letter section. Send us one so we can read it aloud and just make sure you let us know if you want to remain anonymous or not because Tristan will say your name. Absolutely, and I will enjoy it. <laughs> and Sean, if you could tell them about that merch. Well, if y'all are looking for some merch, you know, we got the t-shirts, the hoodies, the windbreakers, everything you're looking for, the candles, pens, stickers, anything uh-huh. you're looking for for this holiday season, you can get it for yourself, you can get it for your friends, you can get it from your mama and daddy, whoever you want to get this merch for, you can find it at Culture 101. Whoever you're going to be matching PJs with. Yes. Culture101podcast.com <laughs> forward slash shop. All right, y'all. Well, that does it for this two movie review. Until the next time. We out of here. Bye.